Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and for today's Linux OS review, we're taking a look at Ubuntu Mate 16.04. Now, we're a couple weeks away from the official release of the Ubuntu 16.04 series, so I am using the uh, the beta 2s for all of my reviews of, uh, you know, not only Ubuntu Mate, but, you know, Ubuntu GNOME, regular Ubuntu, Lubuntu, Zubuntu, all of the Buntus. Uh, I'm using the betas, and the whole reason for that is I wanted to get these reviews done and out there on YouTube before uh, before the actual release, so that uh, you know all the people that like to check out my channel, y'all can see okay what's what's new, what's happening, uh, you know things to watch out for, all that kind of stuff um, before you download and 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 upgrade and all that sort of thing. Now, having said that, the reason that I am doing Ubuntu Mate first is because I am going to switch my main operating system of, of my desktop computer over to Ubuntu Mate 16.04, and I wanted to get this review out of the way so I can start customizing the desktop to my heart's content. And you know, I'll probably do a video showing you what uh, you know what I've done to make changes and all that kind of stuff, so you can see what I've done, that sort of thing. Because um, I, you know, I put this on my laptop about a week and a half ago. Been running it on the laptop. Really like this the this operating system. Um, you know the good solid Ubuntu base. The Mate desktop is probably you know the most flexible of the desktop environments out there. Um, and this is coming from a person that is really loves the GNOME 3 interface. Uh, but uh, you know what's been going on in in uh, in the world of uh, the Mate desktop. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. It's really flexible. And not that I don't still like um, the GNOME 3 desktop, but uh, uh, you know what, uh, I've, this this uh, operating system's really really grown on me. So what you see here is the default look of Ubuntu Mate right after you've installed everything. And the first thing that pops out to you is right in the center, this welcome screen. Now a lot of distros have welcome screens these days, but I think that the one they're using here, if it's not the best, it's one of the best. Um, you can have it set up so that it, it, it comes on when you, when you uh, first log on or, you know, uncheck this and then it won't. Uh, it won't open up when you first log on, but you got all your social media icons across the bottom. You got links to, you know, features, introduction, you know, stuff about the, the distribution, um, links to getting involved and donations, the community, the chat, all that kind of stuff. But the thing that really is, is awesome is this software link. And it takes you to, to what they call their software boutique. Unlike a traditional software center like the Ubuntu Software Center or, you know, GNOME Software, this does not list every piece of software that is in the repository. It goes and shows you stuff that is um, maybe the most commonly downloaded or the most commonly requested, that sort of thing. So you go and click here on Internet and, you know, boom, here we got, you know, some Flash Player that, uh, BitTorrent Sync, our Dropbox, Chromium, Corbert, you know, pick whatever it is that you want. Just go and click install. Boom, it installs for you. You're ready to go. Uh, very easy to, easy to work with. And, um, you know, if you want the more traditional software center, because one is not installed by default, uh, you can go and install that right from the software boutique. Just pick where it says software centers, and you have the options. You've got AppGrid, and which I'm going to install AppGrid just so I can demo it for you. I think it's a real nice uh, uh, alternative to the Ubuntu Software Center. So just click on that to install it. Give it a second, and it will go and install for us. Ask for your password. Installing packages. Configuring app grid. Ask 
and there we go so you got that option uh, you can also install the GNOME Software Center and if you really want to you can install the Ubuntu Software Center as well and there's also Synaptic Package Manager which is my preference um, and probably a lot of you uh, of you that have been using uh, Ubuntu or any of the Debian based distributions for a long time you're going to be familiar with Synaptic and you know we'll probably go with Synaptic but uh, you know this app grid is a pretty nice uh, uh, application. i tell you what while we're talking about app grid let's just go ahead and launch it from here and uh, take a look at it well I think the name kind of speaks for itself you know everything is set up as a grid here you can just kind of cruise around looking at you know everything that's available that sort of thing and I have noticed while it scrolls pretty quick it, it sometimes the um, the images kind of lag a little bit I don't know if you notice that as I'm scrolling through here not real big deal but a little bit of a lag there and you can do a keyboard search from up in here so let's say we we're looking for LibreOffice you know boom it'll pull up LibreOffice for you and you can you can go from there or you can do a category search maybe uh, we want to look at some of the games you can go and search through things here and whatever it is that you want to install you know just click on that thing and you can look at some reviews if it's got reviews tells you a little bit about the game got some screenshots here and if we want to install it just click on install boom we're we're done and on our way so I was playing around with that a little bit uh, on the laptop um, you know never had any issues with it um, like I like I showed you there there's a little bit of a lag sometimes with uh, uh, when you first started up with the uh, the images uploading but other than that real nice application now as I said I believe that Ubuntu Mate is the most flexible and customizable of all of the official Ubuntu flavors and just kind of demo that um, you know you like I said you got your default layout here and you can go and tweak it and customize it to your heart's content but there are some pre-configured layouts for you and um, you know one of those might might suit you uh, you know and you don't have to spend a whole lot of time going and configuring uh, if you go here to preferences and go to look and feel we'll pull open the mate tweak tool and from here there's there's a couple different things that you can tweak from here under desktop now I'm the kind of person that I don't like any icons or anything like that on my desktop I want it clean the only thing I want to see on my desktop uh, assuming that I don't have any windows open is the background uh, you know um, no icons no you know uh, I don't want a conky nothing I just you know nice and plain um, so for somebody like me you know I can come in here to desktop icons click them all off boom they're gone now under windows <clears throat> you can enable and disable animations um, uh, enable window snapping undecorate maximize windows have, you know all kinds of tweaks there where do you want your window controls on the left or on the right so you can flip them around if you if you so desire and then window manager depending on your graphics card and configuration that sort of thing um, <clears throat> you know there there's a couple different settings here you can go with um, Marco which which has no composite no compositor uh, Marco with basic software compositor Marco using Compton compositor and then also Compiz. Compiz is the advanced uh, accelerated desktop effect so if you want to do the wobbly windows the desktop cube all that kind of stuff go to Compiz and you can set that stuff up and I'm not going to go into that in this review video uh, and I've actually done videos on setting up Compiz in the past although if anybody wants me to do a new one just you know leave comments down below and I will do an updated one uh, for me the Marco uh, Compton GPU compositor that gave me the best results no screen tearing so you can see I can move it around and uh, you know things look pretty good here um, I was getting a little bit of tearing um, 
back with the standard Marco um, and um, I'm probably going to end up going to Compiz because there's some effects in Compiz that I like, um, but I haven't gotten around to tweaking that uh, just yet. So anyway, you got all these settings you can do here, and then there finally there is the interface. Now right now we've got what they are calling the Ubuntu Mate layout, but you can go to let's look at this Cupertino, which gives you a single panel across the top, and you got uh, plank dock across the bottom for launching your most used uh, applications. Uh, we've got this Fedora inspired setup, this GNOME 2 style setup. Mutiny is interesting <clears throat> because it looks a whole lot like Unity. Um, you know, we've got applications lined up here, we've got a top panel. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, they may like having the Unity setup of a, you know, a panel over on the left-hand side. And actually, in all actuality, it is a good layout uh, for uh, maximizing the use of screen real estate, uh, at least uh, if you've got a widescreen monitor. Um, but, you know, a lot of people uh, very much like the classic uh, single panel or Two, two panel um, that you saw on GNOME 2. Then you got this netbook setup which is a single panel fairly compact. It's OpenSUSE which is a single panel on the bottom. Alright I had to pause the video there for a second because GVC view which is the webcam viewer you see down here it crashed on me as I was switching through the uh, you know the different uh, panel layouts and it's not the first time that I had that application crash on me since I've installed Ubuntu Mate. Um, haven't had any issues with any other programs other than this particular one so I'm not thinking it's as much of a, uh, a Ubuntu Mate issue as a GUVC view issue and I've I've actually had issues with this application in the past and you know I keep coming back to it because it's got more features than like uh, cheese and, and some of the other webcam viewers but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know it keeps on doing that it uh, it may not be my favorite for much longer anyway so you get an idea what's going on with the panel layouts and you know you can go and make your own custom layout I've done videos on that in the past. I may, uh, I may do another one if anybody wants me to. But one of the cool things is, is you can go and set up your own custom layout and then save the panel layout so that you know if you got the desire to switch them around, you can come back to it again without you know you just click it and boom, you're right on it. So really neat feature of that with that. So we're on the Ubuntu 16.04 code base. So what kind of what you know what new stuff comes along with that that's going to be found in and essentially all of the Ubuntu uh, derivatives that are going to be based on 16.04. Well you've got all kinds of upgraded packages. That's that's the kind of thing they do in every release, you know. So I think LibreOffice we're up to the 5.1 series now. Um, and the same with other packages. The kernel is now up to 4.4 and uh, you know past few kernel releases have been a lot of big improvements one of the things that I've noticed with this uh, with this kernel I have a Panasonic Lumix G6 um, DSLR and you know before when I was running uh, not only on on uh, the 14.04 code base, but even on uh, on the 15.04 and six and and uh, 15.10 series, um, with the default kernels, they would not read my SD card. However, new this new uh, this new release, it's reading my card. So I'm I'm thinking that's uh, that's in the kernel. I may be wrong on that, but uh, you know we're. Uh, uh, um, but I'm pretty sure that that's where the difference is. Um, other things in the kernel, you know, better uh, better power usage, especially for the uh, the newer Intel processors. Um, so there's all kinds of improvements that are in that are in the new kernels. Uh, looking here at the list right here, we got we're up to Python 3.5, upgraded VIM to Python 3, GuLang 1.6, Open SSH 7.2. 
Docker 1.10. Now, for a lot of people, all of those numbers and all those upgrades aren't going to mean anything. Um, and, you know, uh, that's something that a lot of us that are enthusiasts for not just Ubuntu, but other Linux distros and, and technology in general, something that we tend to forget is that for a lot of people, all this stuff that I'm talking about right now, they don't care about that. All they care about is that when they sit down at their computer, that they can flip the power on, sit down and write their Word document or write an email or cruise the net or, you know, whatever it is that they do. They don't care about all the specs and all that other kind of stuff. So that's, you know, that's kind of one of the, the nice things that we've got going on here with the, with Ubuntu Mate, that welcome screen. You know, let's kind of go back to that again. You know, I talked about these links before, you know, for that person that, you know, that I just mentioned, the one that just wants to sit down and do stuff, you know, when you're, when you, when you first turn it on, okay, let's go to getting started. Okay, let's do some software updates. Do we, uh, are there any um, proprietary drivers I need? Um, you know, let's customize it. You know, boom, it just kind of walks you through the steps of getting it set up for you. <clears throat> so that even the more you know inexperienced users can just sit down and get to work. System resources are fairly light, as would be expected with Ubuntu Mate. Um, you know, kind of looking at what we got going on here. While I am running GUVC View, the system monitor, the simple screen recorder, I got Firefox open. Um, couple of processes running in the background and my memory usage is at 1.2 gigabytes um, baseline this thing was running down around 300 350 megabytes of so very very light on the resources um, now that will be kicked up somewhat if you go and use comp is um, just because that's that's a little bit of resource intensive um, and actually and looking at my CPUs right now they're and as you said, I got an eight core processor, so that's why you see, you know, eight up here. But um, if it weren't for the screen recorder, which is, you know, those of you that have done recording, you know, it's fairly CPU intensive. If it wasn't for that, these things would be barely registering right now. So system uh, baseline, at very light on the resources. So, uh, you know, every not everything but a majority of your resources are going to be available for your applications once again so you can just sit down and get right to work rather than you know all of your resources being used by your desktop so issues that I've run into well they've been relatively minor you know I pointed out the GVC view thing and like I said I don't think that that is a Ubuntu Mate issue I think that that it really comes down to an issue with the application I've had a love-hate relationship with that uh, with this webcam viewer for for years. I love the features it has, and when it works, it works good. But it has a tendency to crash under, you know, with certain kernels and whatnot. So, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe I just start, just you know, stick with cheese and and not try to use this thing. Anyway, so there's there was that issue. Other than that, all the applications that I've used have worked flawlessly. No issues with like the the desktop crashing, panels falling apart, or anything like that. Uh, all of that has worked great. Um, the other issue that I have run into has been graphics driver. I'm using a AMD 77 or HD 7700 series, um, but we do not have the FGLRX. Uh, proprietary graphics drivers available to us right now and I'll link to this article on Softpedia that, that that can go into a lot more detail than I can essentially AMD is no longer going to support these gra these uh, these uh, Linux graphic drivers they're moving to this open source AMD GPU series which is cool and all except that um, at least as of right now, only the latest two series of AMD graphics cards are supported by this new driver. So those of us with the older 
AMD graphics card, you're just up a creek without a paddle. Um, so that leaves you with using the open source Radeon driver, which, you know, uh, for basic use, it's okay. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to try doing games with it. Um, but if you're a gamer, you're probably not going to be using a five or six year old AMD graphics card anyway, so it's kind of a null point. Um, <clears throat> it's just kind of irritating that AMD is going to, you know, they're dropping support for uh, for all the Linux users out there. Um, now, kind of scrolling down to the end of this article, there was an update that says we've been informed, blah, 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 that the proprietary AMD Catalyst driver, FGLRX, has been temporarily, temporarily removed from the Ubuntu 16.04 LTS repos as it is not yet ported to xorg server 1.8 it will be added again as part of the first point release ubuntu 16.04.1 um, and that was the other thing i was going to mention you can't go to the amd website and download the tar file and install the proprietary driver yourself because it is not compatible with xorg 1.8 it needs an older version so you, you're kind of screwed. You, if you if you got an older AMD card, you have to use the Radeon driver. And uh, you know, like I said, if you're a gamer, you probably don't have an older card. Um, uh, so it's I don't know. It's one of those things where it just kind of rubs me the wrong way that they're not going to support uh, uh, the Linux users that have these older cards, but. Uh, once again, this is not an, a Ubuntu issue. It's really an AMD issue. One final thing to watch out for, and this is for those that are upgrading from, uh, say, 14.04 or 15.10. There have been some bug reports that uh, during the upgrade process that the installer crashes and, and you know everything crashes and burns on you. Now this doesn't happen during fresh in installation, only during upgrades. So, you know, personally, I always do a fresh install. It's not that much more work, and if you send, and actually, I, in, in a lot of ways, I think it's the better way to go, um, just because you can kind of take the opportunity to clean house, so to speak. Um, but I know a lot of people real they, they they insist on doing the upgrades and. You know, the upgrading process has gotten better over the years, but it used to be, man, like, uh, you know, I, I think probably half of the upgrades, you know, quote-unquote upgrades that I tried doing uh, ended up in the system crashing and whatnot. So, you know, for years I've just been doing clean installs. It works every time and, uh, you know, no issues. But anyway, if you're going to try to do an upgrade, at the very least, back up your system. So having said that, I think that about finishes the review up. Like I said, this is going to be my main desktop for uh, for I don't know how long. You, everybody who watches my videos all the time, you all know me. I'm major distro hopper. So a few months from now, I'll, I'll uh, you know I'll get the itch again and I'll have to switch up again. But um, you know at least for the time being, this is going to be my main desktop. So I will do a few follow up videos on or at least one showing you how I set up my desktop and applications and all that. And one of the things that I'm working on, I started playing around with uh, learning bash scripts and uh, I've been writing a, a bash script so that it'll automatically install all the software and PPAs and all that kind of stuff that I normally install during, a, you know, in a, in a fresh install so that, you know, I can just, start up that that script and boom it'll do everything for me so i might do a video on that as well anyway uh, thanks for watching as always i hope to see you all on the next video give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video if you're not a subscriber please subscribe see y'all next time